Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. So today we are gonna be doing something a little different. We have these three chairs that I got off of Facebook Marketplace and one of them, as you can see, is a little faded. So I'm gonna try to be giving that guy a little facelift with some furniture paint. I have never used it before. I've watched a couple of videos on YouTube on how to use it, what is the best way, all that sort of stuff. So. I'm gonna be trying those skills and letting you guys know how it worked for me. Per usual, we are going to start off by ripping some skirts, bearing some legs. But before we get started, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing so that you guys can stay posted on my next videos. I have some really cool things coming up, so make sure you're doing that. I have some big flips and some big surprises, so woo! And without further ado, let's get flipping. So I got three chairs off of Facebook Marketplace. This first one I'm gonna keep, this second one I'm gonna, you know, do the usual and sell. And then this third one I actually have some special plans for, so stay tuned. So for this first one, you know the drill, we're just ripping off the skirt, giving it a good clean, and reselling it. And so this process was pretty quick. You just take out the staples. It's maybe 15 minutes of work tops. So when taking off the skirts, I actually like to flip them upside down. I find that I'm able to start tearing a lot easier. Right here, I actually just yeeted myself. Um, completely sliced myself with the staples, so that was cool. Um, be careful, guys. And yeah, so I find it a lot easier just to grab the little bits that you want to try to pry off. And um, I usually like starting with the small corner pieces and then just tearing from there. So when dealing with some of these uh, broken staples or the staples that just, you know, are still in there after you tear out the skirt, I like to use this method where you just grab and twist. I find this to be so much easier and you rarely break the staples and it's way less effort on your part. Just twist and let the pliers do all the work for you. So for the paint, I am looking at trying this one out and this spray out. So we'll see how the- oh, alright, thanks gravity. So since I have all these scrap pieces of skirt lying around now, I decided to use those as kind of my testing fabric to see how they go on, how thick they go on, what technique I should be using. I saw online that you're supposed to wet your fabric first, so I made sure to spray it down really well um, with some water first, and then I got to painting. For the ottoman, I kind of liked this lighter green color. I didn't want to put too much onto it. Um, I wanted it to kind of be its original color, kind of that like greenish, yellowish. And this spray, I did not like at all. Um, it didn't go very well, it didn't have much coverage, I wasn't able to really, you know, get the color that I wanted. So I tried a little mixture of the paints and decided to go with the green one. I liked that one best. 
So first you want to spray down the fabric that you're going to be using and then you want to take the brush and really work the paint in there. Um, and if you put a little bit too much on to one area, don't worry about it. Just make sure to go back in with some water and brush it out really well. I find that the paint spreads pretty easily when you do that. Now it was time to get started on the chair. So I didn't want the base to be painted, obviously, so I made sure to go ahead and tape that up so I didn't get any paint onto that portion of it, just to make it look a little bit more professional and clean. And then I started painting. I decided to go with the deeper color of green for this one. Um, I just, for some reason, thought it would potentially look better. Um, it turns out that I was low-key a little wrong. But, you know, once you start, you, you gotta uh, commit, right? <sighs> So when working on this back part, you want to make sure you're really spreading out all the folds and getting in between all the nooks and crannies with that paint. That way when people sit on it or spread out the fabric or anything, they're not going to see any of the original color. So once this dries, you want to go over it with a uh, sanding block. I tried doing this. I've heard it works for other people, maybe it works for, you know, a different kind of paint. Mine was a little on the cheaper side, so maybe if you're going with like the more expensive paints, this will work. I tried doing it and it didn't really work for me. The texture of the fabric was still really coarse and rough, but I went over it with my vacuum with a little bit of cleaning solution in there and I will make sure to show you guys and link it in the description below. Um, this helped a little bit more. It still wasn't that soft velvet texture that it originally was, but it did help bring it back to that just a little bit, just a little closer. <laughs> and now we apply coat two. All right, guys, um, so I feel like like eight out of 10 maybe would not recommend to a friend. Um, I did not like the furniture paint at all. I thought the color came out very um, candy-like, uh, very artificial. It didn't look like authentic velvet in the end, um, but also, it's furniture paint. I don't know what I was expecting. I was recommended to use a uh, spray by the woman that I bought it from. I don't think she had tried it before either. I think she just like saw a video about it and, you know, thought she would recommend it. But uh, yeah, I tried the spray, didn't like that either, tried the paint and thought that that was the best option. But overall, I think you're better off just trying to sell a faded piece. I didn't like the texture that was left afterwards when you rub your hand on it, even if you clean it, even if you spray softener on it, you know, whatever you try to do, it will still be rough and crunchy and just like not that soft velvet texture anymore, which I am so sad about. So yeah, definitely would not recommend, but it was a learning curve. You win some, you lose some, you know? I tried it, never in my life will I be doing that again. I got a beautiful yellow chair and a really cool ottoman out of it that is going to be going into our new home. So I take that as a win, yeah. And uh, I didn't ruin the other chair with furniture paint, so I will hopefully be able to sell that as well. We will see. So let's talk prices. So 
I bought the yellow chair, the one that we are keeping for 150. I bought the winged back chair and the ottoman, the ottoman we are keeping as well. I bought both of those for 150 also, and then I bought the other greenish yellow one for 100. So all in all, we have $400 total spent on these three chairs. I'm going to try to sell the greenish yellow one for a profit of 250, 225. We'll see. Um, and then as far as the one that I ruined, um, I'm gonna try to, you know, make a little bit of my money back with that one and just sell it for 100 to 120, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. I'm just try to make back some of the money that I lost. And then, yeah, the paints themselves, I believe were $4.99, I think. And uh, it took two bottles of the paint to uh, cover the whole chair once. One bottle was one coat and then a second bottle was the second coat. Two coats, two bottles, and I was able to cover the entire chair. So no profit on this one, probably. Um, if I can get 250 for the other one, it will cover the cost of my yellow chair and the chair itself. And then I'll probably, you know, end up losing about 50 bucks with the other chair, but um, you never know. If you guys wanna stay posted to see how much I sold those chairs for, I will be updating the description below. So um, stay posted there keep checking back but instead if you guys don't want to keep looking at the description to stay posted you guys can also go over to my instagram and give me a follow there and i update it in the sold updates highlight story that's you know little circular guys on my below the description and I also have a TikTok if you guys are interested in following me there. It's the same handle as my Instagram if you guys want to check that out. I have little short clips of the videos that I post on here. They're really satisfying to watch. And if you guys have any tips or suggestions on how I can make my videos better, I'm always looking for improvement tips and how to do that. Leave those in the comments below. If you guys want to see anything in particular, leave that in the comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. See you next time. Stay flippin'. Mm.